Hey everybody, I'm in the workshop today, although I don't really need to be in a workshop to make this. Uh, seven or eight years ago I made this tea handle inspired by Tim Ferriss in his book The 4-Hour Body. So I used that for my kettlebell swings, which were more of a squat and not a very good hinge. That's another story. Uh, but these handles have always been about an inch too big on each side and they really bang into your thighs. So I decided I was going to actually just cut these down, but this post is way, way longer than it needs to be. Even a competition style kettlebell, I think is a little bit shorter than this. So I went and got some new fittings at the Big Orange Box store, some overpriced electrical tape. So I'm gonna remake the same thing with an eight inch post and shorter little handles so it will be about the same width, about 8 inches or so, about the same width as my 16 kg actual kettlebell. I've got a 16 and a 12 kg, which are fine for one-handed work and my Turkish get-ups and stuff. And my presses, my shoulders are a little bit jacked up, that's why I actually got the 12. So I was going to go get a 20 kg, it was going to be like 100 bucks or 130 or 140 bucks for a competition style. So for less than $20, I bought some new fittings and I'm going to use this, which will end up being about 45 pounds. These could actually use a little bit of a spray paint. So this will be a little bit, this will be more similar to the size and shape of an actual kettlebell. And then I can adjust it uh, so I can make this like a 20, 24, 28 kgs, whatever I need. And this one with the long post, I'll use it the bigger weights. I'll probably use this for deadlifts and stuff. So without a, a large expenditure of money right now, uh, I can really up my two-handed swing and my uh, deadlift game. Okay, so these are all listed as three-quarter fittings, which I think is the inside diameter because the outside is much closer to an inch, which fits very well. Let's take these out of the package. So these small style dumbbell weights or barbell weights, it's about an inch and a sixteenth, so they fit pretty well. If you found it too loose, you could probably put a wrap of tape on here or something. The reason I got the electrical tape is because there's going to be threads on the end. I could have bought longer ones and cut them, but why bother? So if you don't wrap them in tape, it's going to be very uncomfortable. Oh, also this black pipe will make your hands pretty dirty. So. We'll tape it. This was the most expensive part, this floor flange. Like seven or almost eight dollars. And I mentioned before I got this idea from Tim Ferriss. I think he said he got the idea from Dave Draper. Um, and he recommends replacing your whole unit every six months. If you're doing heavy swings. So that's why this one, my original, I'll use it for um, deadlifts, but I won't actually be swinging this. So, and I always planned on actually putting a small little disc of plywood on the bottom. And I might also make like a half inch a piece in the middle as like a big wooden washer. Because otherwise the weights just sit this little tiny bit of the flange. Anyway, that is here and over there. So, it's pretty. Okay, so make sure you're well seated. So I don't know what the maximum weight you want to put. You're basically hanging on just by these threads. So wherever you're using this baby, uh, make sure that if this unit comes apart. It's not going to hit something valuable or a pet or a child or maybe a loved one or even someone you don't like. It could end up in a lawsuit. So, so I still might have to cut. I might have to trim the ends off these ones still. I thought they might thread in here a little further. 
Well, we'll give it a try. I haven't really warmed up today. I think we're just going to throw 110 on here. That's basically all it is. These handles in. This is why you tape your handles up. Yeah, still quite wide, I see. Yeah, so I'm going to have to chop these off. So we do need to be in the workshop today. Uh, I'm going to pretty much chop off the threads. generally square it off and uh, just knock this corner off. Okay, you're just building it. So. A little bit of a workout. So yeah, I think I will eventually add some plywood to the bottom. It's a little kinder when it's landing on the floor, especially if you have a finished floor. So you could probably use hockey tape. Well, I kind of liked the electrical tape. I don't know, it's, it's about enough grip, but it slides well enough. I don't know, it doesn't tend to cut your hands up or rip your hands up. Hockey tape might be too grippy. Depends on what you find most comfortable. Pretty sure I used electrical tape because it's what I had, but it ended up working out quite well. Okay, that seems a lot better. Fits in between my legs nice. If I find that it's a little too short, I think those flanges or the T-handle, these things, whatever the hell they are, the nipples, uh, they were only a couple bucks each, so I could always get new ones and redo it. So this one I'm gonna keep probably for uh, deadlifts. Uh, so this one I could probably, Probably put it up to 60 or 70 pounds, no problem. I'm not sure if I trust the flange for that much. I think I'm going to keep it between 44 and 53 for uh, 20 or 24 kg for my two handed swings. So it is much closer to a regular size of a kettlebell as opposed to this, which was quite big, especially when you get a couple of big plates on it. It still works. I don't know, I find the extra length, your, the pendulum, your fulcrum is a lot further from your body, so whether that has a detrimental effect on your lower back or not, I'm not sure. But anyway, this one is a lot closer sized. Pretty happy with it. I think I'm going to switch the little weights onto the top just because that looks funny to me. <laughs> uh, but I probably will add a little piece of plywood on the bottom. And because the weights are just resting on the little tip of this flange here, I'll probably make basically a plywood washer as well. That's just about the thickness of the top of this flange here so that the weights are bearing solidly on the plywood. We're still relying on the threads only to hold this baby together. So like I said, if you're using it, uh, make sure that if those, if it comes apart, that it's not going to hit anyone or anything valuable. And uh, probably check your threads and replace them every so often. And probably don't go too, too crazy with the weight. Uh, this one's older, but I'm going to use it mostly just for deadlifting, so it should be fine. 
I guess one thing you could do is drill a hole in this and put some threaded rod through here and add some reinforcement and another nut or something if you wanted to go crazy heavy, but if you're gonna go to all that trouble, you might as well just buy some proper kettlebells. For now, for under 20 bucks, uh, this gets me up to the next step. 20 and 24 kgs equivalent. And uh, <laughs> my Walmart go zone. Uh, I wanted to get an actual kettlebell on Sunday night. Walmart was the only thing that was open that had a kettlebell. So it's actually not that bad. And I've got my 12 kg, which is a Progression Explode Club Series. So I don't know. This one I actually really like. I might get another one when I do get an actual kettlebell. They weren't that expensive. This was just under two dollars a pound. This was a, I think these are about two bucks a pound. Anyway, I like it. The handle's much more comfortable than this. Am I rambling on? Anyway, Tim Ferriss inspired adjustable kettlebell T-bar system version 2.0. Oh, I forgot to mention. I'll just Tim. It packs pretty flat for travel. You could technically take these out. Pretty compact package. Oh, we're taking that off. Hey, it's an Indian club work with these babies. <laughs> Anyway, uh, if you feel like getting into kettlebells maybe for a slight investment, you've got some weights kicking around. Pretty good for two-handed work. Not so good for anything else really. But yeah, cheap way to get into it, get the feel for it. So thanks a lot for watching guys.